private time with God. Yes. And what's happening in ministry is that what happens is sometimes folks spend their private time and it's a lonely life. And what happens is they get tired of being private and lonely and they start to hang out with all the folks. And as they start hanging out with all the folks, they lose that anointing they had. They cross their with God. Come on now. You know, Moses had to go up the mountain and spend time with God. When he came back down, because of just God's presence was so much that he glowed. I mean, he glowed so much so because he got a reflection of the glory of God on him. The folks said, Moses, we can't even stand and look at you. You have to put a veil over your face because the glory is too much for us to stand. And if you want to have the glory of God, you've got to spend private time with God. Private time with God. Matter of fact, you know, our theme is going after God with all our hearts and minds. You have to also spend, if you're going to be close to Jesus, you have to go by the cross. Yeah. You have to go by the cross. Have to go by the cross. Go, by go back to Luke. Let's just wrap this up. But the other answering. Now, here it is. But the other male factor. He answered it. Uh -huh. Rebuked him, saying. Isn't that something? He had, he got this thing so that he even rebuked the other one. You got some nerve talking like that. You know you deserve what you get. Go ahead. Does not thou fear God? Don't you fear God? I mean, See? Man, don't you fear God? Don't you even think about what's coming out of your mouth that the God of heaven, he listens to everything you say. He knows everything you do because his eyes are everywhere. Behold the good and the bad. Man, don't you fear God. Mm. See, that thou art in the same condemnation. You are in the same condemnation. You've got nerve to join the folk who are free out there running around making fun of this man. Here you are in the same condemnation and you've got the nerve to rail on Jesus. Mm. Go ahead. And we indeed justly. And we are up here because of what we did. One thing about it, folk who do things out there in the streets, they know the other folk who do things out in the street. Mm. Thieves know other thieves. Or whatever you're into, they right. know each other. Amen. Familiar spirits. They all even come up with deals. I'm going to take care of this side of town. You take care of that side wow. of town. Wow. We won't have no Come problems. on now. I'm going to sell over here. You sell over there. And we ain't going to have no problems. Only time they have problems is when they decide to go on each other's territory to do their Thing. Uh -huh. Folks know. So then folks, he was even being honest about it. He said, you know what? One thing we know, we ain't seen this fellow out here in the street. So we know he wasn't doing the things they said about because we know jokers because we're jokers. <laughs> yes, yes, go ahead. But we received the due reward of all of these. Mm. In other words, he said, you know, we're really, I'm not able to face what I did. Mm. We do receive the due rewards of our deeds. Yes. But this man has done nothing. But, but this man has done nothing Amiss. Look at this situation. Here we are at Calvary. It's in Jesus' last hours. Matter of fact, he's getting ready to die because his strength is leaving him. There's nobody there to speak up for Jesus. None of the 12 disciples are there. Judas had already killed himself, and the 11 went into hiding. Only people left there were the women who decided to follow and hang in there because they also wanted to give comfort to Mary, Jesus' mother. But there's nobody speaking up for Jesus but this thief on the cross. The other matter of fact, somehow through the grace of God and through the strength of God, through the revelation of yes. God, who Jesus was, all of a sudden, he's the only one speaking up for Jesus. Jesus. He says, you know what? This man is somebody else. He is innocent. Yes. yes. And he said unto Jesus, yes. Lord, uh -huh. remember me hmm. when thou go comest into thy kingdom. Yes. This man, the thief on the cross, somehow through the spirit of the living God, he got an insight into who Jesus was. He didn't say, Lord, take care of me, save me. Lord, get me out of this. Lord, let's get out of here. Lord, can you fix it up? No, you know what? He said, you know what? Because they've already accepted his faith. He said, Lord, when you come mm -hmm. into your kingdom. Yeah. Yes. He said, Jesus was already stripped bare. He was already stripped near naked. He didn't have any crown except that crown of thorns on his head. He didn't have any insignia of his anywhere. He didn't have any servants anywhere. He didn't have anybody waiting on him anywhere. Yes. Somehow he got a glimpse that this is the king of kings. Yes. The Lord of lords. Hallelujah. The Lord is coming to the kingdom. kingdom. I believe you got a kingdom there. Remember me. Yeah. Remember me. Hallelujah. In other words, Lord, I believe you are who you say you are. Yeah. Remember me. Thank you, 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Jesus, because he's still Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. King of kings. Yeah. He said, death, wait a minute. Because I'm king. Because I am the Holy Lamb of God. Jesus. I'm take a moment and take in my first comment. He said, you. Because of the weakness and the 
because of the strangulation process. They die of asphyxiation because they can no longer lift themselves up and get their lungs room enough to breathe. Usually they run out of air, they run out of any might or energy to say anything. But Jesus said it with a loud voice. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. To us, he gave power yeah. to become the sons and daughters. 